duck dino farting. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five more ways that you can use the touch modifier in Adobe Fresco to just make your life a little bit better. Isn't that what we're here for? All right, I don't know if it's gonna make your life better, but it'll make your drawing experience in Adobe Fresco better, a little faster, a little easier. That's pretty good, right? All right, let's, uh, let's look at my iPad. I'm gonna show you some stuff. So this first one is super helpful if you've got a whole bunch of things on different layers within your composition and you wanna resize or transform all of them at once. So you're gonna go ahead and select the transform tool, then double tap your modifier, and then go ahead and select all the different frames or layers that you wanna transform at the same time. So I've got them all selected here and I can go ahead and just scale this down. And now I've transformed all the layers nice and easy and got a little extra room on the outside and it didn't take much longer than if I was doing it to just one frame or layer. So let's say you're tightening up a sketch of a sweet skull that you just drew. So you come in here and you draw one of these eyes and you're like, dang, I nailed that. I don't want to draw the other one because it's probably not going to be a nice circle like that. So what we can do is go ahead and copy and paste this. So I'm just going to grab the magic wand tool, select the line work there, and then come over to my layer and then just go to duplicate selection. And now I have my second eye socket on its own layer. So you'll notice down here at the bottom, we've got these little arrows to sort of move things around. And you'll see that they go very, very slowly, just tiny, tiny little movements. But if you use the modifier, double tap that, this jumps up to 10 pixels. Could be a little bit slow depending on your file size, but much faster than inching it a little bit at a time. And it keeps it locked in a straight line nice and easily. So now you're looking at this and you're like, oh wait, that eye can't be exactly the same because it's uh, on a little bit of an angle and this one's gonna be bigger because it's closer to us. So you're like, all right, well, let me try and transform it. So if you go into the transform tool, you can use the skew or distort to just sort of try to like modify it and move it over to fill this space. And it gets a little bit tricky, but what we could do instead, can you guess? Double tap the modifier. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna lock one side of this so that it's a lot easier to get this perspective right. So now I can go ahead and merge that eyeball down into the rest of my drawing and then finish it up. Cool skull. So let's say you drew this duck dino farting and you were like, it's perfect but I wish it had sort of like x-ray uh, weird eyes. So you're like, okay, well, let me try and draw those. So you come in here, you draw your first circle, you make your brush smaller, and you're like, okay, that's a good circle, but I don't wanna keep drawing them. So you come over to your layer that you drew this on, cause you drew it on a separate layer cause you were not really sure. So you duplicate it and you're like, all right, let me scale it down. And you're like, all right, and like this and this. And you're like, well, there's gotta be a better way. So you undo that and you double tap the modifier. And now it's gonna scale to the center. Look at that. And now we duplicate that, double tap the modifier, merge those down, duplicate layer, can move it over here. Scale it up a little bit to match. And now we have the perfect eyes for our duck dino farting. So let's say you had an illustration that you merged all together and you were not prepared for the future. And then you realized, hey, the blue I'm using here is too close to the background and I wanna change that. So you're like, okay, well, I don't have it on a separate layer. Let me do the next best thing. Let's use the magic wand tool. So you go over here, you grab your magic wand tool, and then you just start working your way around, finding all the blue stuff. And then you're like, oh, oh no, I accidentally selected that red. But you don't notice. That's crucial because if I do it now, then you'll be like, well, you could have just undid it. Undo, you could have done undo. And I'd be like, yeah. I know. So that's why I'm going to go down here and select all these. And then this blue, because it's like the shadow area. And it's like, oh no, I got this red one. Well, with the modifier tool, 
and double tap, and now you can deselect. I don't know if it's just me, but I find this super handy. So I'm gonna come back in here, make sure I got everything else, and we just miss this. So the magic wand is helpful here because I've got that like shadow color. So this isn't a modifier thing, but I wanna change all this blue, but I can't just fill it in with a new color because I have shadow and you know that different tone in that area. So it's not just one color that I have to change. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this selection onto a new layer. And now what I'm gonna do is make an adjustment layer on top of this and start messing with that. And you'll see that it's changing everything. And, and I don't want that. I just wanna change the tone of the blue. So what I can do is make that a clipping mask to the layer below. And now I can adjust this and only affect that blue so I can find something that works better with the background. You can also do this with the lasso tool. So let's say you're trying to select something quickly but you got a little too aggressive and selected too much, you just double tap the modifier and then you can cut out the area that you didn't want. So the touch modifier, it's a uh, pretty handy. It's a pretty useful tool. If you liked these five tips and you haven't seen last week's video, you should watch that one because those are the first five that I picked. So obviously those ones are probably gonna be a little bit better, but I think these are good ones too. And if you've already seen that one, check out this Adobe Fresco playlist that has just a lot of tips and tutorials to get you started and even more. And so, and there it is. Getting started and maybe some advanced tips and tricks and beginner tips and tricks and a little bit of both. Good talk.